there, my name is Heather Araby and I work at Night House Education Center in Houston, Texas. I think we all have the stay at home blues. So I hope wherever you are, you are healthy, your loved ones are healthy, and everyone is safe. From day to day, it's hard to think of activities to do with our children. So at Night House, we thought we would develop a few videos of easy activities that you can do that take three to five minutes and you can do them every day with your children. They require no additional supplies. You can use things from your home and they don't have to be on Zoom in order to do it. So the activity that I'm gonna work on with you is called phonemic awareness. Now it is under the umbrella of phonological awareness. Phonological awareness is an umbrella term that covers the sound structure of language. So that could be anything like hearing the words in a sentence to understanding if whether or not a word rhymes. Can your child hear that cat and sat rhyme, but cat and car do not rhyme? You can also, under phonological awareness, is alliteration. Words, sentences that start with all the same words, like um, six silly cats sat side by side. That's alliteration. Well, when you get to a more challenging task, it's called phonemic awareness. Phoneme is really just a fancy word for the smallest unit of sound. So when I think about the word sat, I say the sounds s-a-t. Sat has three sounds, so that means it has three phonemes. Research guides everything that we do at Nyhaus Education Center. We want to be informed with the science of reading. And we wanna make sure that the information that we're presenting to teachers and parents is up to date. And the research on phonological awareness and phonemic awareness as a critical skill for reading is overwhelming. Many researchers and scientists say that phonemic awareness, the ability to hear the individual sounds in a word is the foundational skill required for good reading. So that's why we thought this would be a fun activity. Again, I'm just using things from my home. There's one very important thing about phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness is all oral. There are no letters associated with phonemic awareness. So when I'm doing these activities, I'm not going to talk to children about how it's spelled or what letter makes that sound. It's 100% oral. Um, if your child has a hard time with this, I'm going to show you some activities or some um, things that you can do later that will help um, them kind of see the sounds without using letters. So let's start, okay? So we're going to do some segmenting and some blending activities. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to segment. We're going to look at a word and then take it apart into its individual sounds. I just went to my garage and got some things out of my garage that I thought would be helpful. What's this? It's a hammer. Let's say the sounds in hammer. <sighs> ah, mm, er. How many fingers am I holding up? Four. So how many sounds? Four. How many phonemes? Four. What about this tool? What's that? It's a wrench. It's a wrench. Let's say the sounds in wrench. Er, eh, mm, ch. How many sounds? Four. How many phonemes? Four. What about this? Mm. Does anyone know what this is? This is a drill. Let's say the sounds in drill. D, r, i, o. How many phonemes are in drill? Four. Four sounds, four phonemes. Look at this, I have an entire package of Can you see it? Nails. Let's say the sounds in nails. N, A, O, Z, nails. Four sounds. Now, like I said, sometimes we're segmenting, but sometimes we're blending. That means we're gonna say the sounds first and then have our child tell us what word that makes. So, I actually live in Austin, even though I work in Houston. 
and the oak trees in Austin are terrible. They're constantly dropping their leaves right around spring break time. So I have to use this. What is this? Let me tell you the sounds. Er, a, k. Three sounds, what word is that? Rake, yes. When I'm outside gardening, I always need to use my sh, uh, v, e, o. Shovel. Mm -hmm. I use my shovel. I'm blending those sounds together. Now, I also have a black Labrador who sheds more hair than any dog on the face of the planet. So, I have some tools to help pick up all the dog hair. Here's one. What's this called? B, R, U, M. It's a broom. Yes, and when I want to scoop up the dog hair, I use this. It's called a d a s t p a n dustpan. Yeah. And sometimes I just don't want to mess with the broom. So instead, I use my s i f er my swiffer. That's right. So when we're thinking about phonemic awareness activities, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that a student can segment a word and blend a word, which is what we just did. We segmented a few words like hammer and wrench and drill, and then we blended a few words like shovel and swiffer and dustpan. If that activity seems a little bit too hard, it could be that your child might need a little bit of a visual cue. So what can I do because I'm not using letters? I'm not spelling the word. So what can I do? Well, I can just use things that I have around my house. Again, I could use Cheerios as markers. I could use actual little markers. I could use coins like pennies. I could make it really fun and use M&Ms or Skittles. But what I wanna do is I'm going to use each marker, each little Cheerio, to help show that there is a sound there. And I might have my child move the Cheerio to show the sound. So for instance, oh, let's see if you can see that. So for instance, if I say, what are the sounds in drill? I'm going to have my child say d, er, i, Oh. And then count. How many Cheerios do you see? Four. So how many sounds are in drill? Four. Let's try another one. Wrench. Say the sounds. R, E, N, CH. How many sounds in wrench? Four. How do you know? Because you see four Cheerios we moved one Cheerio for every sound that we heard. Another thing is, maybe this is just too hard to start off with segmenting. So, we might just wanna identify the first sound that you hear. Say the word wrench. Echo, wrench. What sound starts the word wrench? Rrr. Yes. Say the word swiffer. Swiffer. What sound is the first sound in swiffer? Very nice. And then we also want to do it with the final sound. That's much harder. So say the word drill, drill. What's the final sound in the word drill? Oh, very nice. Say the word screwdriver, screwdriver. What's the final sound in the word driver? Er. Segmenting and blending is where we're going to start with our phonemic awareness activities. But once again, going back to research, they tell us that we really need to do more challenging activities. That's something that we're gonna talk about tomorrow. Another added bonus of using all of these things that are just found around my house is it helps me talk to my children about the vocabulary of things, the way words work. So what we do know from research is that children need to create little maps to help them know how words go together. How do they fit together? So if I'm thinking about using this opportunity to develop oral language, I might say something like drill, hammer, screw.
screwdriver. What do all these things have in common? Well, they're all tools. They're all things I use to fix something. If I were gonna go to the store to buy these, what kind of store would I go to? Well, maybe I'd go to Home Depot or Lowe's, maybe Walmart. Hmm, could I go to HEB to buy these things? No, I couldn't. Why can't I go to HEB to buy those things? What does HEB sell? Oh, HEB sells groceries or things that we eat, things that we use around the house. Now, what about my Swiffer? Could I buy my Swiffer at HEB? I probably could. I could buy my Swiffer at HEB and I could probably also buy it at Walmart or Home Depot. So when we're talking to kids, we want to do everything we can to develop their oral language. Because what we know is that once a word is in a child's speaking vocabulary, it's going to be so much easier for them to then read that word. So today we talked about phonological awareness. Remember phonological awareness is that, wait for it, umbrella term. It's the umbrella term that speaks to the sounds in language how sounds work together. It can be something as large as words in a sentence, syllables in a word, identifying rhyming, non-rhyming, and then it goes to that really difficult skill, phonemic awareness, hearing the individual sounds in a word. Remember, phonemic awareness activities are 100% oral. We're not doing any of it using letters. So stay tuned tomorrow because we are going to do another activity that has a little bit more advanced phonemic awareness activities. I made this sign for us. Again, I work at Nye House Education Center in Houston, Texas. N-E-U-H-A-U-S. Nyehouse.org is where you can find more information about reading, the science of reading, and how to help your child become a strong, good reader. I hope this was helpful for you. I look forward to talking to you soon. Have a good day.